you prepared for? This is the number one question I ask my clients. You come to me and you tell me that you have this desire and we'll start working together and you'll be talking about the relationship and things that are going on in the relationship or things at work, things with your family, your best friend. And I always ask you, what is your true desire? And my number two question is, are you prepared to have this or are you preparing not to get this? Think about exactly what you are preparing yourself for. This is Susie, your beautiful millionaire swan queen. Welcome back to the garden, my beautiful duckling. Subscribe, smash the like button, share my video. I will love you forever. I am a life coach with a 99% success rate in getting people back together with the love of their life. My goal is to unite a million people in loving, happy relationships. If you would like to be one of those couples, I do have some openings in my coaching and in my paid Facebook group. Please check out the links in the description below. So you have this desire and you decided with this desire that you want a specific thing. Now, a person, a job, a house, a car, a dollar amount, to me, everything is specific. You have a desire to be with the love of your life. So the love of your life is your goal. You want to be married, live happily ever after. You want to have 2.5 kids. You want to have a pet, a two-car garage. You want to live in paradise. But are you actually prepared to have that paradise? Or are you prepared to settle and have it with somebody else? Because persisting is the only way you're going to get it. And here's the thing. Somebody else shows up. So I'm persisting in my assumption to be happily married to Jared. Let's say somebody named Joe shows up. Joe's absolutely amazing. He fits everything that I want Jared to be. I have to choose which one I want. So was I prepared to lose Jared and go with Joe? Or was I prepared to reject Joe and persist and be with Jared? A lot of people, when it comes to specific people, because Joe comes in and he pays you attention, and you know, guys, if you're manifesting a girl or you're a girl manifesting a girl, I always use Jared. So again, nothing personal for throwing out the name Joe. Apparently I have a problem with the letter J. So Joe comes in and he starts giving me all this attention. It makes me feel good. So I forget about Jared and I move on. Well, did I really move on or did I settle? So when you are prepared to succeed, you are assuming you're going to be happily married to Jared. But when you are prepared to not receive, you are assuming that no matter what you're doing, it's not going to work. A simple mind change. And it is a question that I have to ask all the time. You want the specific job. So you want to work at Swan Queen. You want to work for, for me, right? You come to me and you're like, I want this job. I would love to work with you. I have these qualities. So your qualities that you have is... You're great at typing. You'd be a great secretary. Well, I don't need a secretary. So you are going through social media and you're like, well, she doesn't need a secretary. And that's what I'm capable of doing. So I'm not going to get the job. Somebody comes to me and goes, Susie, I'm a social media genius. And I would love to work with you to be able to grow your social media sites all of them across the board. I can show you how to do this easy and I can teach you how to edit your videos. I can do all kinds of stuff for you. I could literally be your virtual assistant. You record 
you tell me the topic of conversation that you want in the social media post today and I'll put them out for you. That person's going to add a lot of value to my business. The person who just types, and I'm not disrespecting any secretary, believe me, I'm not. I know you do more than typing. You guys schedule appointments. You make sure that the boss has the things that they need for set appointments and all of this stuff. I'm just using, I can type as an example. You don't think your value is more than just typing on the keyboard. But this person thinks their value as a social media expert would be a perfect fit. So these two come to me. I get along really great with the typist. She is absolutely, positively amazing. The social media person, something rubs me the wrong way. This person is a perfect fit for my job, but the way they talk to me, I don't like it. Which one do I hire? I'm going to hire the social media expert because they're going, well, I'm a value to her. It doesn't matter how I can talk. It doesn't matter how I can speak because when I show her what I can do, she's gonna love me. She's gonna think I'm the greatest thing since chopped liver got taken off the market. The typist is, oh, all I can do is type, so I really don't add value to her business. There's no way she's gonna hire me. Now, somebody comes along and goes, Susie, I'd be a, per a perfect assistant for you. I would be able to help you with chance. I would be able to help you put up your decorations and redo on a month or every other month basis. I can cook, I can clean. I'm a social media expert. I, I can do all of these things and I can streamline your business and make it easy. And all I want in return is for you to help me get my specific person. So this person's gonna be in my life 86,400 seconds a day and all they want in return is a specific person. And they're going, Susie helps me get my person. Susie helps me get my person. I help Susie, so Susie helps me. Oh my God, this is a perfect arrangement. She's gonna love this idea. This idea is going to put me at the top of the list. It doesn't matter, but I'm gonna have to learn how to do some things because I'm just saying I can do them but she's gonna believe me. She's going to take and pick me because I'm the most enthusiastic person out there and we're gonna get along so great. Bam. Which one am I gonna hire out of these three? Because I'm not hearing what she's saying in her head that I don't really have 100% of all these qualifications, but I'm a fast learner and I can do this. And then when I start teaching her, She's going to be like, oh, okay, so now I can apply this to this so that I can make this. And it turns out that her trick is ghostwriting. So she can write in my language, the way I speak, the way I sound, my tone, and she can help me finish my book, maybe do a program, also write posts. She can help me to become a better writer by teaching me a skill set that I need. And in return, she was so happy to get to work with me, she did all of this. The typist, mm, the social media expert. Well, you know, she's gonna pick me. It doesn't matter how I speak, but she's gonna pick me. I can, I can just, you know, be however I want in my language but she's gonna pick me. I, you know, working with her is gonna feel icky, but she picks me. The enthusiasm, that's where you want to be when you are preparing for your desire. You don't want to be over here going, hmm, pick me, pick me, but I really don't think she's gonna pick me. Oh, I can talk to her any way I want and it's gonna feel icky to her and it doesn't matter to me because I'm still gonna get the job. I'm gonna get my manifestation, but I'm not gonna keep that person because I feel icky. The enthusiastic person, she loves me. She wants to work with me. That her self concept is saying, I'm of value. I am of value to her business. 
The other two didn't use one word, value. So when you are preparing for your specific person's relationship, are you telling me that they're the best boyfriend ever? They're the best husband ever, but then also texting me and telling your friends all of the bad things that this person is doing. Or you're saying, I'm only telling you this because I want you to know where I was coming from, but you're still stuck and you are preparing yourself for this person to not be in your life. This job not to be in your life or to get it and then you lose it, which is the worst possible thing in the world. When you prepare yourself for success, nothing will stand in your way of succeeding. You're not gonna sit there and go, you know, this might feel icky to her, but I'm gonna get it. You're gonna be, I'm the best fit. I get the job because I'm the best fit. I add the best value to her business, so she's gonna pick me. Your specific person, you're all worried about what this third party is doing. And I'm over here trying to figure out a video title. I don't care. I, I don't care. That has no effect on my life. What has effect on my life is the way I see the outside world. And if I see the outside world as I'm spoiled, then I get everything I want. If I see that I get it quickly and easily, I get it quickly and easily. If I sit there and go, like I was doing, life sucks. Oh my gosh, life sucks. My house is still in chaos in life. Oh my gosh. I got the kitchen a little rearranged. I'm doing 15 minute increments, but I'm finding it hard to do 15 minute increments. So organizational skills right now is a top priority. So because I'm thinking about getting my house in order, I'm not working on other things that I need to do because this is a priority. So I am still prepared to get my desire, but if they knocked on the door right now, I would be fumbling in apologies because my house is a mess. Your words create your life. And I've heard people say, well, just think it. Here's a test for you guys. I want you to walk around and say, I'm happily married in your head. Just say I'm happily married in my head. So I'm happily married, I'm happily married, I'm happily married, I'm happily married. And you're only saying it in your head. Gate where you feel on the ladder of success. Do you feel that you are happily married, a total 10? Or do you feel that, you know, this is not necessarily possible, it might be possible, maybe it's possible. Because if you're saying it out loud and you keep saying it out loud and your pretty little ears hear it, you're going to have success because you're not letting it go. So a narcissist starts talking about something and they never let it go until they get it. And then when they get it, they remind you constantly that they got it. My daughter is hooked on Shark Tank and she loves watching this show and she loves Pawn Stars. So there was an episode of Pawn Stars. This guy had a sword that was thought to be John Wayne's from when he was in the movie. And he was trying to sell the sword to the pawn shop. Well, here's the thing. They brought in John Wayne's son, Ethan, to see. Ethan said, this was the company that we used, but this movie that it was used in was before my time. But I know the person who actually does this company and this is his signature on there. Let me call him. He sends the copy of the certificate to this person and the person is sure that this sword is real. He gets on the phone with the guy and he says, this document looks good. It's that it's definitely my signature. But then he started saying, well, you can see where this was copy and pasted. So the signature was his, but not the message. The message wasn't his or the way they did it. So in turn, the sword became not authentic. So it wasn't John Wayne's from that show. And this guy was devastated because all these years he thought he had the Duke's sword. When you are 
walking into a place. The next episode she watches, somebody has Madonna's Day Runner. Up and down. I know this is hers. I know this is Madonna's. I know this is Madonna's. I want this much money for it. And I know this is Madonna's. Let me bring in a handwriting expert. Bring in the handwriting expert. He starts picking apart the letters, the way Madonna does things. Something about her S's. When I do an S, it looks like a swan. And I've done it my whole life. I literally do an S and it looks like a swan. He's going through and he's like, this looks like the way she would write this. This looks like the way she writes this. And at the end, he said, this was Madonna's day runner. But he didn't think it was worth as much as the guy wanted for it. This guy kept saying, I know it's real. 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 He was speaking it into existence. When you allow the old story to control you, your sword becomes phony. You are the typist. Instead of the enthusiastic person who says, she's going to love me, we're going to get along great. And the guy who said, I know it's real, I know it's real, I know it's real. You have to look at what you are creating and you have to be of success or failure. If you want to be successful, you can only talk about success. The kids who grew up in the ghetto, dirt poor, totally turned their life around. They're multimillionaires. They have billions of dollars. They literally went from a poverty mindset to a very rich mindset because they never let it go. The Rock, he came back. My best friend. Dwayne, The Rock Johnson, came back from Canada, $7 in his pocket. He joined his family's wrestling school, and then he started on the wrestling circuit, and he was doing all these shows in all these little towns until he finally made it into the big show. He didn't quit. He persisted. And his phrase is, I'm the hardest working person in the room. And he thanks God every time something happens good in his life. So when you are thanking the universe, you're persisting in your assumption, you are saying it over and over again, it will happen because you are preparing yourself for success. Success gets you what you want. So why not choose the easy path, let go of the old story, and only talk about how successful you are at creating that life you want. I love you guys. Have an absolutely positively amazing day. And as always, leave me a comment and let me know how I drastically changed your life for the better.